Hey everyone, Active Learning here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about words to vector. This will be part one of the words to vector series. So stay tuned if you want to check out part two later on as well. Okay, so here's the outline of how we will approach words to vector. Um, here are some of the steps that we can take. And in this video, we're going to talk about one hot encoding and bags of words. And along with these, we're going to talk about a lot of other things and we're going to code things up this time. So yeah, let's jump right into the video. So here are some basic terminologies that you need to be familiar with in order to understand today's lesson. So the first word is called corpus. And a corpus is essentially a collection of words, which is simply a paragraph or an essay. Uh, it's very easy to understand. It's just think of it as a paragraph. And a document is simply a sentence. Um, I'm not sure why they make it sound so professional, but yeah, a document is simply a sentence. That's all it is. And third, we have vocabulary which is the number of unique words. And you can add a fourth term called words, but words really just mean words, right? Okay, so we can actually link all of these together. Uh, we can say that a corpus is made up of documents and a vocabulary of a corpus will be all the unique words in the corpus, right? That I hope that was easy to understand. Okay, now let's move on. So here is a basic example, right? Um, let's say this is our corpus, this entire thing. We can call it our corpus, right? This entire thing. And within these, we have these color boxes, which will be our documents, right? These are the sentences within this very, very small paragraph, right? These are the sentences. These are documents right and then what what will be the vocabulary well the vocabulary is just the count of unique words within this corpus right so our vocabulary will be 14 right if we just count the unique number of words we get 14 right so this is just a simple example to get you familiar with the basic terminologies and yeah now here are some of the steps we will take in um, text preprocessing, right? Preprocessing our data set. So first we'll get our data set and then we'll do text preprocessing. We talked about this yesterday and we're going to review this by coding it up today. And we're going to cover the third step, which is words to vector today as well. Okay. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about one hot encoding and back of words. So what is one hot encoding? Well, let, I feel like it's easier to explain with an example, right? So if I have this corpus, right? Uh, I forgot the periods. Let's just assume that these three are individual documents, right? If I wanted to apply one hot encoding to this, the results will be something like this, right? For document one, if I apply one hot encoding, I will get this. You might be very confused. Well, um, if you have done machine learning before, you might be familiar with one, the concept of one hot encoding, right? So basically what we're doing is that we're checking the first word, I. Do I have I here? Yes, so I put one. This is like in binary, right? One means yes. Zero means no. And for the second word I'm checking, is there M? Yes, so here's M and the rest are zero, right? Because these are not equal to M. And the third, I am checking watching. So this will be one here and this will be zero, right? Now, what about document two? Well, you see that the dimensions of this matrix actually shrunk, right? So we have three by three now. Right, so this would be our document is called best food ever. So um, 
I actually made a mistake here. There, this is supposed to be zero. So yeah, sorry, my bad. This should be document. Uh, this should be zero here instead of one. Okay, and for the rest, it's correct, right? Because there's food here. There's no food at that position. So there are actually some issues with one hot encoding, right? You might have noticed that when you were just looking at this, you might be wondering, why are there so many zeros? Well, one of the issues is actually sparsity, right? Sparsity basically reversed, uh, refers to the proportion of zeros in a vector. And in this case, when for one hot encoding, because each word is represented by a binary vector with only a single one, the resulting vectors will be very sparse, right? We have a lot of zeros. And this is this can be highly inefficient because it requires a lot of storage and space and it can really slow down our computation, right? And we also see that our dimensions are reducing. And the thing with that is that we can't actually train a model with if our dimensions are different, right? We have to uh, we can't just add in another word here, right? That, that that won't make our model work at all. So this issue is actually called out of vocabulary if our dimensions are shrinking. And another issue is that the semantic meaning of the document is not captured, right? So what do I mean by semantic meaning? Well, it basically means that we're not able to get the connection between words for example, we aren't able to connect the words watching and football together, right? We treat these as individual words. We can't get the semantic meaning between them, right? Now, let's see how our next uh, term, I guess, or method can s resolve this issue. Or am I not, actually? Uh, okay, so... This is called back of words. This is a very popular technique. Uh, you have to know this if you are trying to learn NLP, right? All right, so back of words is really simple. It's essentially similar to um, one hot encoding, but I guess you could say it's better, I guess, and more intuitive. All right, so let's say we're using the similar example here but we're first going to apply stop words, right? We talked about stop words in the last video, if you are not sure what it means. So stop words basically allows us to remove the unnecessary terms like he is the, this doesn't really give us an anything. We, um, these will be considered stop words, right? And this is the, we, we will remove these and ever we'll remove this as well. And we, we can still essentially capture the main idea and meaning behind our documents, right? Okay. Now, what back of words is, is that first we will get the vocabulary, which are the unique terms after we apply stop words, and then we will count how many of those are present, right? For example, in this corpus, after we apply stop words, we have uh, best and best, right? So the frequency, which is the number of unique instances, will be two, right? And for player, right? Oops, I made another mistake here. I meant one, not two. I'm very sorry about this. So this should be one here. And I meant to write two for food. Okay, we can change this. So then so after we get the frequency, we can make it into a table, right? And these are actually turned into features. The vocabulary are turned into features, right? So we, for example, in document one, right, we, we'll map these to the features. So document one, there is one instance of the word best one instance of the word player and zero instance of the word food and cat and eating and dog, right? Because they're not present in document one. And in document two, we can see that there is one instance of the word best and 
zero instance of the word player and so on, right? You get the point. So it basically counts the number of occurrences of each vocabulary within each um, each document, and then we get get the count right here, right? It's like a table. And this is called back of words, but there's also something called binary back of words, which basically means that as long as this value here is greater than zero, we can just cap the count at one. So if we have two, as an example, if our count for best is two here, um, if we have a binary back of words, it will still be one because we only care about if there is and currents of best, right? So that's all that matters. Okay. So now let's go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of back of words, right? Because they do matter. Well, the advantage of um, some of the advantages of back of words are it's very intuitive, easy to understand, right? That matters. Okay. And some of the disadvantages is that it's um, it has a lot of sparsity right it, it hasn't fixed the issue of sparsity for one hot encoding right and the second issue is that out of vocabulary right we can't just add another term because you know the dimensions will still be reducing right for example um let's go back here right we can't just add in another term we can't just add in like uh, chef, for example. We can't just do that, right? So out of vocabulary is still an issue. And the words are out of order since we are ranking by frequency, right? We're ranking by frequency here, meaning that the words are actually out of order. So that also indicates that semantic meaning is lost since these words are not in order and then we're capturing them individually right so there's a loss of semantic meaning here okay so how do we actually capture semantic meaning well we have something called n grams and n here can be any number right it can be two and two will be called bigrams and if it's three it will be called trigrams right these are greek roots okay so for bigrams, you will combine two terms. For example, best player, I will come, uh, best food, for example, I'll combine this and count how many times best food occurs in our each of our documents, right? For example, in our document two, best food occurred once. And I can also combine this with best player, best cat, and now I'll count the occurrence of each one of these. If I had trigrams, for example, I'll combine best player food right and I'll count that right so this is how we can actually capture semantic meaning using ng engrams right okay now it's time for coding everything up you know we we are trying to consolidate the stuff we have just learned so we the best way to do that is through coding so let's do that so let's get to coding so let's say right, so Let's just first get a paragraph, right? So I have a paragraph here, and this basically is explain what quantum computing is. This is my paragraph, for example. I got this from ChatGPT, actually. <laughs> Very cool. So this paragraph, right, we're calling it corpus because that's what a paragraph is. And we can just run this, and let's wait for it to initialize. Okay, so we have it. We can see what it looks like, right? If I run corpus, um, it's basically a, a stream, basically, right? Okay, now we can actually apply the things we have learned. And to do that, we have library in NLP called NLTK. So I'll explain to you how powerful NLTK is in this video. So First, we'll have to import an LTK, right? We import it. What's okay? Yep, and then we'll import from an LTK dot stem import border stemmer, right? 
in order this is for stemming right for stemming uh nlt oh nltk right so we have to import porter stemmer if we want to perform stemming and if you don't know what stemming is i explained it in my previous video as well but basically it allows us to get a word for example let's say the word is historically and it, after we stem it the word will become history right because the word historically and history have the same stem you could say like the same stem will be history right so that's what stemming allows us to do okay now let's get from nltk.corpus import stop words right um, this is for stop words for uh, removing stop words right remember what stop words are they're basically useless words that we don't really need and we can just like, remove them right and another thing we need is uh, lemmatizer right but we can import that later uh, actually let's import that right now now tk does them import word now lemmatizer or lemmatization right uh, these are some of the things we need. Uh, these are all I can remember off the top of my head. We will import more as we go on. So yeah, we can first run these. And yeah, if you're not sure what lamentization is, it's basically very similar to stemming, except that we are um, we're comparing the root we get to actual words from the dictionary. So it's more accurate. But it's slower because, you know, we have to compare it to word, every word from the dictionary. Okay. Now, what we have to do is that now we have to... Now we have to convert... Um, what do we have to do? We have to convert our purpose into documents, into words, right? Right, so we have to convert our corpus into individual documents, right, or sentences. We can do that through, we, we first have to install something called nltk.download. Uh, oops. Uh, punk. We have to first install this, right? Hold on. Um... Let's first quit, All right? And let's run this again. So we're running punked, right? We downloaded this, okay. Now let's convert our corpus into documents. Convert corpus into documents, right? So we can do documents equal NLTK dot. You can do something called tokenize, right? Dot set tokenize corpus right so what we're doing here is that we're applying tokenization right remember tokenization is basically breaking individual sentences or paragraphs into individual words right or symbols but in this case we're breaking our corpus into individual sentences instead of individual words right so let, let's see our documents right what 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 do we have here well, you see that we have an array of strings, right? You know, we have these three separate documents. Okay, perfect, three documents. Okay, now after we have that, right, we can do a lot of things, right? For instance, we can apply stemming now, right? We can remove, uh, we, we can apply stemming to make our program run faster. Okay, we can do stemming now. So in order to do stemming, you have to do stemmer equal quarter stemmer, right? We're creating an instance of the class and stemmer dot stem. Um, we can do, let's see, yeah, let's do computing. Let's see what we get, right? We get the word compute because, you know, the word computing has, uh, um, 
a similar root as the word computer. So we get the word compute, uh, compute, because that's where they intersect, sort of, right? Okay, so that's what how we can apply stemming, and we actually import porter stemmer up there. So you might get an error if you haven't imported porter stemmer. So yeah, that's how we can apply stemming. It's simple as that. And now let's download the essential libraries for lemmatization, right? Download libraries necessary for lemmatization. The first one is called nltk.download wordnet, and another one is nltk.download omw 1.4. We need these for working with um, lemmatization. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Now, let's actually imp implement lemmatization. Lemmatization, right? We can do a lemmatizer equal word net lemmatize. Let's see a com, please. Yeah. And then we can just do lemmatizer dot lemmatize. Let's say the word historically, right? Let's see if it works. Yeah, we get the word historically because it's actually a word. But if I wrote goes, for example, I might get the word go, right? So this is lemmatizer. It's basically the same steps as stemming. It's very simple to do. Now, what else can we do? Well, we can clean our corpus a little bit, right? We can you know, let's scroll up to our corpus. We have a lot of these punctuation marks, right? That might affect our performance. So let's change that. We can import a library called re, re, and then we can do a corpus. We can create a list called, uh, yeah, let, let's call it corpus. You know, we're breaking it down. So we can do for I, and range length of documents, right? We're looping through our documents. We can call it remove uh, punctuations. And then we can call it review equal re dot sub. Okay, in here, the syntax can be a little tricky. Let me think. Uh, it's a lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z. Right, so you might be very confused here, but what it's basically doing is that we are only keeping the words that are between lowercase z, a to z, and uppercase a to z. That's all we're doing here. And we're replacing those words, uh, we're replacing every other word or symbol with a blank space, right? And then we can document i. And document is are it's a list of our individual documents right so documents i is our for our ith document right our ith document okay now we have to convert it to lowercase because if it's um if there is a difference in the case letters it, it can affect our performance as well so then we can do corpus dot pen we're adding it to our corpus list right Boom. Now let's see where we get. Oh, look at that. So do you notice something off here? Well, all the punctuations are gone, right? So if we scroll up here, we had some commas, we have some periods, right? There, we removed all of them by simply looping through and then removing every other uh, symbol or punctuation, um, replacing them with blank space. That's all we did. Okay. Now, what if we want to apply stemming to all of these words, right? Every single one of these words. Well, how can we do that? Well, it's actually is the exact same process, pretty much. We can do, we can call it apply stemming, right? And corpus, uh, let's call it corpus stem, right? Equal, it's a list and for I range length of corpus, we're looping through our corpus, and review equals, um, actually, 
let's we're looping through our yeah corpus since we um we removed all the punctuations right we can call it review equal corpus i we're getting the first the first document here okay and then we can do review equal review dot split this basically splits into individual words right and by that you know all the space between them indicates that we're splitting these two with a comma into different words right that's what split does now we can do review equal we're creating a list here stemmer dot stem word for um for word and review right because we have to go through the words and review right we did that by splitting and then we have to apply stem stemming to each individual words that's what we're doing here and then we can do review equal uh, blank space dot join review right simple enough we're joining the we're joining these words together again after we apply stemming so um, that's all we're doing and we can we have to append it right uh, stem dot append review okay let's run that okay we didn't get any errors perfect okay now let's see what our corpus stem looks like boom do you notice any difference well these words have been stemmed you, you see uh, they're stem now but they're still individual documents right perfect we just did stemming okay now um let's see how we can do lemmatization right we can um, apply lemmatization right we can call it a corpus lemmatization here I, i'm gonna let you guys try this on your own first so if you want to try on your own first pause the video it's basically what we did up there so if you want to try it you can go for it but if not let's code it together okay so we can do for i in range length of corpus right we're looping through our corpus and then we can call it review equal corpus i we're getting our i uh, document right and then we are doing review equal review dot split we're splitting it into individual words and then we can do boom see AI, AI just completed that for me right so we're lamentizing each individual word right after we broken them up into individual words we're lamentizing every single one of them now we have to join them together right review equal um, we join them with the blank space don't join review right simple enough and then we can do corpus lemma tie uh what did i call it corpus lamentization yes okay corpus lamentization uh, it's not defined corpus lemmatization. perfect dot append review all right no errors so now let's see what we get corpus lemmatization boom so you see the difference between stemming and lamentization our results are more accurate right the word com the word compute does actually have a meaning but computing is preserved here so it, it has more meaning but um i believe that this actually ran slower than stemming so that's a downside of using lamentization right <clears throat> okay so now let's see how we can um apply how we can apply stop words right we have to use stop words so we can do now tk dot download stop words we are first uh downloading stop words and then we have to do uh, stop words actually yeah let's just first download it okay after we download it let's see how stop words work right let's see how stop words work right so what we can do is stop words dot words and let's use english here right all right so let's see what we get boom these are all the stop words 
for words that we are removing from our documents or sentences, right? You know, all these pronouns, um, you know, doing, did, having, these are all useless terms. So we're removing all of them from our documents. Now, after we downloaded our stop words, we have to remove them, right? So how do we remove our stop words, right? Well, we can simply apply the same thing we have been doing for stemming and lemmatization. Right? We can remove stop words. Um, let's call it, um, let's do, we have to first set it, right? Stop words equal set stop words dot words English. We're using English here, All right? And we're going to call it corpus stop words equal. We're creating a list here. And, you know, oh, yeah, I completed that for me. We're looping through again, and then we are doing review equal corpus. All right, we're doing the ith documents, right? And then we're doing review equal review dot split. We are separating them into individual words. And then we created a new list, review equal word for word and review, if not word and stop words. I believe that should work. Um, yeah, I think so. Word for word and review, if not word and stop words, right? So what we're doing here is that we're appending this word in review if the word is not in stop words, right? Because we want to remove the words from stop words. So we only append the words not in stop words, and then we join them with the space in between, right? Same thing we have been doing. And then we can finally append it, right? So corpus stop words dot append review. Okay. Now let's see what we get. Uh, corpus stop words. Oops. Corpus stop words. Uh, boom, see, you see that the word is, are, that all that, um, all that type of stuff are gone from this, these documents, right? We remove them through the usage of stop words. So yeah, that's what we did. And now what else did we cover? We, we did back of words today, right? So in order to do back of words, we have to actually use scikit-learn okay so we can call it back of words from sklearn dot let's see yeah feature extraction text we're importing count vectorizer okay and we can create an instance count vectorizer right we can first do x equals cv dot fit transform corpus dot to array right and we can see what x looks like here so we just applied um we just applied back of words right you remember what back of words is we're counting each one we aren't doing n grams yet but yeah we're just counting each occurrence of each individual words and we can see for example if i want to see the first um document i can do x0 right this will get me the first document right okay now let's try cv dot vocabulary it should work now boom okay i i forgot to run this first that's why it didn't work okay so what it basically did is that it gave us a count of the occurrences of each word and that can be somewhat useful right you know the word quantum occurred the most okay and yeah, I believe that's it. What else can I show you? Stop word. Oh, right. Binary stop words, right? Uh, sorry, binary back of words. Binary back of words, right? We can do uh, CV equal count vector, uh, vectorizer binary equal true, right? We're using binary back of words, which basically means that our count is capped at one since we don't really care if we don't really care about how many 
instances of each word there are in our, each of our documents, right? So let's, we can call this x2 equals cv.fit transform corpus dot to array o to array and then we can do let's see what x2 is boom you see there's not a single number in this um array that's above two right there's not a single one since we're using binary back of words and so yeah i believe that's everything we have covered today and yeah that looks about right so if you guys have any questions you can leave them down in the comments below i love it when people ask questions because um it allows me to clarify things and i feel better as well um so yeah if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments below and if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe i would really appreciate that yeah thank you for watching